And I've thought often about the future of Sudan. Um, we have a brief time here. We only have till 2.45 to discuss this very important issue. And we have great panelists. Um, so we're, I'm going to let you read their biography information in the program and just introduce you to them by who they are representing here who have great stakes in the future of Sudan. But first, I just want to say to you what my vision of the future of Sudan has held for a long time. Um, going back a few years, Dr. John Garang had a vision for a new Sudan where he said democracy, whether in the north or south, should no longer and solely be struggle for power, but rather as a competition on providing good governance, development, and delivering social services for our people and restoring the dignity and wealth of every man and woman. And over five million people came to greet John Garang in the Green Square in Khartoum in July 2005 when he uh, came for his installation ceremony showing that many people were agreeing with him. But even further back than Dr. Garang in 2005, um, there was a vision for the future of Sudan from a prophet named Zephaniah who said, from beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, my scattered people will bring me offerings. And the future of Sudan has to include religious freedom for everyone in Sudan. Now our panelists today, um, and I'm, maybe they even sat in order, not quite, but we're, we're in good order. So uh, we'll go by the order in which they're sitting. And first we have Ahmed Hussein Adam, and um, he is the Secretary for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the Sudan Justice and Equality Movement, otherwise known as GEM. And next to him, we have Guma Muhammad, who is the Chairman of the Sudan Liberation Movement Mini Manawi Office in North America. Next to him, we have Philip Tutu, who was appointed to the SPLM and leadership as deputy representative to DC and elected by the SPLM North Members Convention to chair in the US. And finally, we have Abdel Halim Hassan, who represents the SLMA um, Abdul Wahid party in the USA. And as I said, read their biographies. These are all amazing men. And they're going to give you in just 10 minutes a vision of their parties and their political positions, future on Sudan. And then we will take questions. And I do mean questions, not statements. And I will, I will be mean. So be ready for it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much um, for this opportunity. I would like um, to thank uh, Art for Sudan and our American friends who convened this important and strategic summit on Sudan very timely after 10 years of genocide in Darfur. We are very excited and we are very grateful for our American friends to have this summit and this um, very uh, urgent summit at this time so that we can focus on Sudan and work together in a partnership, a strategic partnership, to end the crisis in Sudan and have a better future for our country. I'm also glad here to see Richard Williamson, our friend, who one of the few international policymakers then who understand the ruling guard in Khartoum and knew how to deal with them at that time. We are very happy that you are here at this um, meeting. It is very difficult actually to explore and to envision the future of Sudan while the multi-dimensional crisis are taking place right now. But we are always hopeful for the better future for our country. You know, as we speak, and you know that's why this summit is taking place right now, Sudan is um, at war within itself. And the most responsible part, the only part is responsible for this, is the ruling party which is uh, ruling the country right now. There is a war in Darfur, it's still unfolding. If it's not in the media, 
that's something else. But the war in Darfur and the genocide in Darfur is still unfolding there. Over two million is still in the IDP camps and refugee camps and, and you know, killing is going on every day. Everybody knows that. And because of the failure of Darfur, and we didn't manage actually to work out Darfur with the uh, support of the international community, now Darfur is spilled over in Nuba Mountain and South Kurdufan. Uh, Nuba Mountain as well as Blue Nile. And, and the entire country actually is going to be in a, in a total war if this regime, the current regime, the regime of Umar al-Bashir hasn't been stopped. And I'm happy that now the prosecutor of the ICC is given very important commitment that they are going to uh, go after Umar al-Bashir to be arrested because that's the only way we can stop his crimes right now. You know, the current crisis, the war in Darfur, in South Kurdistan and Blue Nile, and the entire crisis of Sudan is a result of um, a project that has been going on for a long time, since 1956. And that project has been revived and enhanced by the presence of the current regime of Umar al-Bashir. That project which is based on one identity of the country, Islamic and Arab identity. That has been going on for a long time. The result, the direct result, everybody knows about it. Now this house has gone completely. The southern Sudanese, they were very hopeful actually to live with us in the United Sudan. But because of that project which excluded them completely, the current regime actually pushed them to have their own country. But the same policies which put the South Sudan to separate, which put the South Sudan to disintegrate, are still that practiced in a very, you know, comprehensive and a very active way. In that for the same policies of discrimination, the same policy of persecution, the same policy of racial ideology actually has been taken now in, in Darfur and Blue Nile, racial ideology as well as Islamic ideology, and this is also the same thing of Blue Nile. So within the current project, which has been going on for a long time, it is very difficult to say that Sudan is going to have future. The question is, is Sudan is already actually to have new project, new national project, which is based on Sudanism and not actually or religious, or religion, or culture, or ethnic, or, or racial, and this kind of thing. That's because that's the only way we can have a new future for our country without it. We, don't, we cannot see any kind of thing. Because we can see, as I said, the result of this project, of Islamic and Arabic project, is very clear. The South has done, as I said, war, still Sudan is at war within itself. And not only that, Sudan is a big rock, is said, it's sponsoring terrorism. Iran is everywhere right now in Sudan. Al Bashir completely sold out Sudan to the Iranian and that revolutionary guard right now they're everywhere and now Sudan is a big um, actually base for the, the revolution, uh, Iranian revolution, revolutionary guard which is taking place in many places actually in our country and now even we hear that and everybody actually knows that uh, the defeated terrorist group who, who defeated Imani right now also in Darfur. So with this current project, with this current regime, all you see actually is more wars all you see actually is more terrorism, all you see is more chaos and anarchy. So I think the, the, the king of this project and the thing of this regime, I don't think, yes, it is the responsibility of the Sudanese, yes, it is our own responsibility, we have to do our homework, but I think also we have a common ground here with our American friends and the entire international community and peace-loving nations around the world. This is very important. We got to have... We got to have this strategic partnership because the removal of this project, which is very short-sighted project, based on this uh, ideology of hate and ideology of imposing one identity, I think it's not just a threat for the studies. I think it's a threat for Africa. It's a threat for the international community because that undermines the very value of the United Nations Charter for sure. Now, how we can go about it? Some people actually are suggesting to negotiate with the regime. I was, in, I have been in negotiation since thousand since. Uh, 2004, from Jamena to Addis Ababa to Abuja to Doha. All we see is the regime using this uh, negotiation and using this political processes actually for PR exercise and to buy up some, uh, some people and just to provide some jobs here and there. But actually they are not ready for agreements and for you know peace agreement that can actually achieve a realize real transformation of the country. Because what we need is not job for some politicians, what we need is 
the collective rights of our people, whether they are in Darfur, whether they are in Brunei, whether in the entire Sudan or something like that. So the regime is not ready and it's not willing and doesn't have any political, you know, determination or political will to accept a win-win deal that can transform the country democratically for a new era of a new project that is actually on, on citizenship and not actually in, uh, in religion or, or culture or this kind of thing. And, um, and, uh, and as I said, the status quo is not going to resolve our problem, and the regime is not going to go for any kind of elections. And I think uh, Richard Williams will know that very well. People like Nafe and those who are around Bashir, they see that power for them is immunity from the ICC, power for them actually is immunity from the accountability of the Sudanese people. Those are not going to give up power. They are not going to give any kind of concession which she can provide tries for the ITPs, for refugees, and for everybody. And, and I think. To, to be honest with you, you know, a genocidal regime, as somebody just indicted by the ICC to come and negotiate with him on the table while he's killing with his own people and he's not showing any kind of regret or remorse and only saying that Bashir so many times that we kill only 10,000 or something, it's very difficult for us and it's very difficult job for everybody and even to convince our people on the ground to negotiate with the very genocidal regime. This has to be very clear for everybody. Now, uh, I think um, the SRF, and I think um, leadership of the SRF, uh, convoy actually their greetings and their, you know, uh, you know uh, appreciation actually for this summit, including uh, Chairman Malik Agar, Chairman Gibril, Chairman um, uh, uh, Abdel Wahid, and Chairman Minni Minnawi, all of them actually, they, they propose this um, uh, working, you know, reaching out people to, to secure some sort of a national platform for Kenya in Sudan. By national platform for change, because actually change is coming to Sudan. Because as I said, the status quo is not going to resolve any kind of thing or something. But actually, we are reaching out more Sudanese. That's why our efforts have been going on for a long time, and, and the fruit of those efforts is the new Doin Carter. A new Doin Carter, I know some people they have some reservation about it or something like that, but the new Doin Carter is a very important strategic attempt to have a base for a new national project for Sudanese. Is the replacement of the Islamic and Arabic actually project which is taking place right now and resulted of this all this kind of oral suffering or something like that. In that new doing charter, we tried our best to address the outstanding issues since the independence of Sudan, that including the issue of identity. Because the as Uncle Francis then used to say, the national crisis of identity. Without resolving that, there will be no future for Sudan. To, to, you know, for the entire Sudan to be based in one identity, it's not going to resolve any kind of thing. So you do in Carta, address that, and say Sudan multiracial, multicultural, multi-religious, not just by saying it or something like that. Actually, we need actually those who are working on that to convince themselves for that kind of thing. The other thing also is what's very important, the issue of religion and state. And I think the Udo in Carta actually addresses it in a very proper way that there should be separation between state and religion. It was very clear actually in the in Carta in, in many ways. And the other thing also, the transformation of the country itself and the structure of the country. Because we are talking about the structure of the Sudanese state, because the current state is bankrupt. The current state actually is not representing the entire people of Sudan. It's not representing actually the diversity of our country. So that we are calling for the structure of uh, Sudanese state and also it's very clear uh, in that charter we are talking about, uh, you know, peaceful kind of transformation. Anyway, the choices are very clear, either Sudan to stay united but transformed, or Sudan is going to disintegrate. But our people are not going to wait for long. Either transformation, full transformation, that can be everybody in the picture, or Sudan is going to dis disintegrate. And I think also our fellow citizens from different parts of Sudan, our you know, historical responsibility and historical obligation to work with us towards the structure of the Sudanese state so that Sudan can be a home for all its citizens, not only, not only for few of its citizens. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's a great speech. Thank you. Uh, uh, dear friends, uh, we are in SLM Mini Minawi faction, uh, co-founders of SRF. Our people in Darfur, Blue Nile, Nugo Mountain, are suffering from the daily dangers of war. This unjust war was waged by Al Bashir and, the, and his regime. A daily disappears in our land and villages of our people. We have to defend our people. That's why we carry the arms in first place. 
After 10 years, we're standing now here, and still the genocide is going on. Peace is nowhere to be found in Sudan. All these peace agreements signed by al-Bashir, they have salvaged the peace agreements from every corner with every different, all the different peoples in order to make the peace, but it is not working because it's not a holistic approach. We stand for a holistic approach in all the marginalized people in all over Sudan. Final peace deals like Doha agreement are nothing but a cover for fundraising for uh, the regime in Khartoum. So therefore, we don't stand by Doha agreement by all means. In the past 10 years, the central government did not effort, uh, the central government did no efforts to bring peace in our four people or in Nubu Mountain, Blue Mountain, to improve the living conditions of the people. Now, whose responsibilities come? We're looking at the international community. Here's where the international communities come. What international community did offer for past 10 years to improve the issue of uh, the genocide that's going on? In our standpoint of SRF, we don't think that international community did enough to improve anything, to push hard enough for Bashir and its friends to change the issue of uh, the genocide or put in a proper map for everyone to see. I thank you, you all our friends here. You people did a very good job letting a light to this issue for lots of people to see, but with no action. What good does it make if we have a genocide? We say there's a genocide, but we do nothing about it. Thus, we will not do anything. So where we stand here, time and again, the international community showed nothing, uh, politically or any other ways, means to have al-Bashir to change his mind. The international community has to set the priorities against itself straight forward in Sudan. First and foremost, should not wait a permission from al-Bashir to take any action towards this issue. Uh, we all ask you people, uh, lobbying, it is, yes, it's working, maybe it is slow, but it is working. We should, all of us stand together in lobbying to have these sanctions in place. I hear many fellow Sudanese, they think, they think that uh, the sanction is not working against the government, but it's working against the civilians. We in Darfur, Buluna and Luma, we got nothing to lose. We lost many, many civilians, many lives. If it comes to suffer for us because of the sanctions, we were more than welcome in order to uh, wait for the results. It might be slow, but we sure we're getting there. Um, now, if we come into the Darfur issue, now we're facing the second phase of the genocide, which is my colleague Ahmad, he uh, mentioned in the jihadis that they come from the Mali. Yes, they do came from Mali and they stationed in Darfur. Darfur terrain is very protective terrain, for that's why these people, they're there. And now, in order to say thanks to, for the government of Sudan, they will end up siding with the government of Sudan uh, to commit more atrocities, and we will be able to, uh, we will end up facing these people from the side and the government of Sudan from the side. So this is the second term of the genocide. And I thank you very much. You Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I want to take this chance to thank all of you as uh, activists, Act for Sudan, uh, leadership of uh, Eric Cohen for organizing this and uh, thank you uh, also as uh, George Mason University to host this and thank everyone else. I would not uh, mention the names but a lot of people here, uh, just some of them just came recently from Nuba Mountains and from Sudan. 
somewhere else. On behalf of uh, SPLM North, uh, we thank you very much for the work you do and for all the support you try every day and night to uh, help our people in Sudan. Uh, of course, we are not going to talk about what is going on in Sudan because all of us here, we know what is going on. That's why we are here and we are trying to find ways uh, to help our people in Sudan. But uh, in our uh, SPLM North, as we asked here to talk about the future of Sudan, we just have a priority in, in uh, SPLM North and SRF. We have a priority uh, before this one. First priority is humanitarian situation in a whole Sudan, especially in Nuba Mountains and Blue Nile, which is blocked from eight uh, basic human lives, which is food and medicine. For almost two years, this is our priority, to find ways to get the food to needy people. Even if there is something to talk about, we are not going to hold uh, children hostage because of anything happened, you say, uh, politically or anything happened there. We should get in and give the people food to eat and we find out what is happening. But uh, we, we want to, from this stage, we hope, uh, this we call international community or world leader will listen to the victims instead of listening to the gangs in Khartoum and the baby sitting them for all this time. Uh, by the way, the genocide in Sudan it didn't start 10 years ago. We are very uh, disappointed. It started a long time ago, but really the world came to find out after 10 years ago only. But it started a long time ago as people follow the story. Uh, of uh, Sudan, between South and North. And it started in Nuba Mountains, actually, in late 80s. And uh, Nuba Mountain was blocked for a long time, if, if not 10 years, is more than that. But he renew it again. Uh, anyway, our vision as uh, SPLM North has been around since SPLM was founded by our great leaders, including our hero, late Dr. John Garan, is clear. It's based on New Sudan. Sudan that uh, based on democracy, gender equality, uh, constitution rights, equal citizenship. That's all is clear, just short and clear. We want Sudan that can hold all Sudanese, regard of color or race or uh, religion or language, culture. And uh, Dr. John Garang said early on when he was alive, we just, Sudan to be for Sudanese before they be before we ask ourselves, are we African or Arab background, Muslims or Christians or non-religion, we need to be Sudanese before that. Otherwise, Sudan will be another country, will be like a cage with different kind of animals. That's why he said, and that should not be a style like that, it will lead to the divide up with kind of animals. If we keep this government in power, which is Khartoum regime, we will see a lot of uh, Sudans. We will not see uh, one Sudan. So we want this one to go quick, so we can keep, if we want to keep Sudan united, we should, uh, base, we should force our new Sudan vision, which is Sudan for all, regardless uh, what is uh, background or ethnic uh, background or religion or language or what you uh, believe in. Uh, this is our uh, vision as SPLM and SRF. And that's why we went on 
and we we uh, formed Kauda Alliance and we went on to form SRF and now we move on to uh, uh, New Dawn Charter. So we are widening the opposition because we believe this is the only vision will keep Sudan united and will give right to all Sudanese and also Sudan that can respect their neighbor countries and abide by international law. That's Sudan we need to uh, have. And also we need to have what is we call government, which is governed by law, not governed by, by ethnicities or governed by uh, regions. We want to have a government that uh, respects the citizens, all the citizens of the country, and abide by the law, leading by the law. Otherwise, we will not have one country. And our people are determined not to back up. They, as they said, we have nothing to lose. And our surrender is not option. We'll go on to find our Now, finally, I just want to mention that Comrade Yasser was invited to be here, but uh, on behalf he, will, he said, there is, as you know, there are some processes going on, and he couldn't make it to here, but he sent us a letter. He wanted to make sure that he, yeah, we understand why he's not here, and uh, he sent a letter, and I think some of you received it. We, finally, we thank you very much, and we're asking you to just keep moving on and to knock every door, to walk every path, until we achieve what we are running for. Thank you. Thank you, everybody here. And I want to give the, uh, to get the chance to thank Act for Sudan for giving me this opportunity to talk to you as Sudanese, as activists, as a part of uh, Act for Sudan organization, working hard for Sudan uh, future. The asking question, what do you have for Sudan future? The same, uh, the same question, that's why that's I ask him. What I have uh, the, the vision for the Sudan, because the future in the Sudan, this is my future, that's why I'm also asking this question, that's why I'm here, to let you know what is our vision for Sudan. Uh, the Sudan Liberation Movement Army is established to liberate Sudanese people from Islamic fundamentalists and Arab racism, whom they are commit crime in Sudan, and also to stop killing uh, my people in Sudan, and also to stop which is going on, it is a fundamentally uh, a regime, Islamic fundamentally uh, behaviors in, the, in Sudan, and also we are going to stop the, Arabiz the Arabization uh, of my people in Sudan, which is uh, belong to all of Sudanese, Muslims and Christians, and as a part of religions, and also and different of cultures in Sudan. Uh, the Sudan Liberation Movement Army started negotiation with the Sudan government because of these problems, to stop this problem. But the Sudan Liberation Movement, it, has, uh, it had more than uh, for three agreement and negotiation with other part, and they didn't uh, solve the problem. That's why we carry gun to stop killing against our people. That's why we carry talking aloud to the world, talking aloud to the Sudanese people to stop what is going on in Sudan. It is the totally change. It is a totally change of the of, of, of the culture. It is a total Islamic fundamentalist going on in the Sudan. And it is the totally Arabization going in the Sudan. Because Sudanese is a multicultural, it's a multi religion, and this is cannot unite us. The unity it is we have to come all together 
to live in Sudan, otherwise we will not. But our belief as youth and as the Sudanese uh, people and as the Sudan Liberation Movement Army, because the Sudan Liberation Movement Army, it is for all the Sudanese. To, be, to become a Sudanese is supposed to, to stop all this going on in Sudan. Directly, the Sudanese uh, government as uh, Islamic, as Sudanese government, as the Islamic uh, front, started bombarding our area, started uh, genocide against the people, and it's still going on in Darfur, and now going on in the Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile, and tomorrow it may be going on in the Bija. People, if we are not going to stop this, we are not going to have a Sudan country. But our belief it is, and this is our vision, to be have a, a, to stand together, we have our, uh, our, our visions, to stop all is going on in Sudan, that is to come together, to create a Sudan as a secular state, as a democracy, have a freedom. <laughs> in our vision, to create a Sudan, have a freedom and peace and democracy. This is only not come by the gun. It is only by the political action, by the civil society action to change the regime in Sudan. The regime in Sudan, it is not only national party, it is not only international party, it is not only uh, 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 a Turabi, it is not only uh, Sadiq al-Mahdi, it is a, a fundamentalist, it is our responsible, we are the youth, we have a responsible of the Sudan in the future. And now, in Sudanese liberation movement, we have a connection of the vision. Abdul Wahid, he is the lead of the Sudan liberation movement. He is almost 50 years, right? And now I'm at 20, 28 years. There are the connections. This is the vision, what we are going to create, a new Sudan, a secular state, which is the, which is the real secret, which is the real separate between the religion and the state, which is the real separate between the, 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 the cultures and, and what you are doing as the governor, because the governor, it is all of Sudanese and the multicultures and the multi-religions, and we have to keep this multi, this, this multi in Sudan. And also, moreover that, daily, daily the, the, Sudanese, the, Sudanese, the Sudanese government starting killing our people. More than 500,000 people have been killed. More than 3 million, they are in the refugee camp outside of Sudan. More than millions, they are in IDP camps. Why is this going on in Sudan? This is a real question we have to stand all together, to ask, to answer this question. Since for 2005, we refused to sign a, 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 Boya, a Boya agreement because that vision was not create any peace of Sudan and now what, what we are seeing since 2005 there are no killing stuff, there are no raping stuff, there are no ethnic cleansing stuff and the world seeing this and this is happened in front of eyes of international community and U.S. As, as, as a special convoy in Darfur, and they write a, a, a report of what's going on also in Sudan and in, in Khartoum as capital of, 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 of Sudan. Uh, a demonstration is going with, by, by the UPF groups and other uh, youth in Sudan because they are calling for peace, they are calling for freedom, they are calling for their rights, their need to, to create a new Sudan, which is which is belong to us, which is is, is our responsible. Uh, the lastly, uh, I, I have to get the chance to send the message of the of the of the Sudan Liberation Movement Army. Our 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 new beginning in Sudan Liberation Movement Army is said that we have to come together, and that's why we did SRF and create SRF as 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 a multi. Um, a movement and, 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 and political parties at the Sudanese uh, uh, parties in Sudan. That's why it's, go, it's, it's develop, develop it uh, and also it's become like as a new dawn who is calling to change a regime. 
The change regime it is a short it is a short term. Our vision in Sudan Liberation Movement is a long term to create a new Sudan which is have uh, 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 depart uh, separate of three state of law. Also, is the right constitution and 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 and, and more. Uh, in Sudan Revolution Front Alliance, also we say we have to give a liberal a liberal state in the Sudan, and we have to give uh, 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 also a liberal state and this uh, secular state and the. Um, also, a democracy for all the Sudanese to choose what they want. And also, in my message it is to international community, you have to take care of Sudanese because they are part of Sudanese. They are part of countries. They are part of international community. Whether, whether you have to have responsible of our, our, our people in, in Darfur, also in Sudan. And also, I want to send this message to United, uh, to United States and especially Obama, in the second term, you have to take action to keep these people in peace, to keep these people to stop, uh, to, to stop a genocide against the people in Darfur. And, and lastly, I send this message and I'm asking, why al-Qaddafi, why Mubarak, why Bashar al-Assad, why not al-Bashir? This is a real question we have to ask. Because al-Bashir, he's a dictator. He's not only just he's a dictator. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a criminal. He's a criminal. And he's wanted by the ICC. He's supposed to go to ICC. It's not only al-Bashir, all of part of uh, national, uh, national party is supposed to go to ICC. And then we will create a new Sudan which is respect us as Sudanese and which is our future. That's why we are crying, that's why we are struggling, that's why we are running, that's why we are facing to you talking aloud to stop what's going on in Sudan. Thank you. Our panelists uh, followed uh, the rules very well. I appreciate that very much. And we have now uh, almost 45 minutes, so we're going to have questions until 2.35, at which time uh, we'll have 10 minutes left for them each to make uh, a final statement. So, uh, and as I said, this is a time for questions. If you have a statement to make, put it in the form of a question, or uh, we will have to um, expel you from the questioning process. Brief questions as well, yes. And as the moderator, I'm going to take the first question. Um, and my question to whoever would like to answer it is um, uh, right now we, we see the opposition groups coming together. Um, we see that there are other people who are in opposition to this government who are yet not part of this, such as the Bija in eastern Sudan and the Nubians uh, who, who are opposed to this government as well. Um, but uh, we also see people who are considered opposition who may not be as much, even though they have joined opposition forces. How do you keep people who are not, do not have the, the best interest of all of the people of Sudan in mind from manipulating and taking over the opposition? Question? <laughs> Yes, um, I think this is a very important um, question. And um, as I said, it's the, the thing that which can lead the country for a real future is to have some sort of um, inclusive and comprehensive change. And that has to include everybody. There will be no breakthrough. There will be no real change without the marginalized majority of Sudan being in the center of change, that including bigger. Because bigger, everybody knows that is um, all actually people of Sudan and the indigenous people of Sudan. So nobody actually can achieve any cake without that kind of thing. That's why we'll continue actually talking to them. And what we say actually about the forces who signed the, um, the New Dawn Charter, New Dawn Charter actually is not include everybody, but it's a real step forward. It's a good step forward, but it's still we have youth actually we need to include. We have the representative of ITPs camps actually need to include, we have refugees, we have leaders of diaspora, we have the women groups, because all these people who are 
in Uganda, the both sides knew the Qatar are not the, the most of the Sudanese also. This is one of the things. The other thing also, we have to be very clear about it, for the traditional parties or for those who have been in power for a long time, mm -hmm. we made it very clear, you have to agree in the structural change, not only change. A lot of people, they want change. Some people, they want maybe to replace al Bashir by another person or something. But what we call, and we define it very clear, what we need is the structural change that can make the Sudan, or the institution of Sudan, that Sudan is the country for all citizens or something. We'll continue engaging them, we'll continue working on them, with them or something, because that's the only way actually to have uh, some sort of a breakthrough. But the role also of the international community, including for you, our friends and our American friends, we need actually to support us to facilitate the change in the country. The homework will do it, but we need your facilitation, not just, you know, you help Libyan, and you help also Syrian, and you are not helping actually the people of Sudan, because change is the interest of everybody for the Sudanese and for their partners in the international community. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew? Yes. Uh, wait, wait. wait for the microphone. No, no, go to the mic. Go to the mic. Go to the mic. Thank you. Okay, my name is Andrew Iva. Uh, this is based on a question I asked one of the SRF leaders several months ago. I gave him, uh, said, what does he prefer, uh, no-fly zone or Stinger missiles as the best military option of us supporting them? <laughs> this particular SRF leader said, forget no-fly zone, we want Stingers. I want the comments of all four groups. What thinking you've done on this and which choice do you prefer? Okay, first thing we 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 sending that that message it is a non fly zone. Because the Sudanese government using uh, a weapon and we bombarding village, bombarding our our you know can't our areas, our village. Non fly zone, it is much better. To, to, to keep our people in safe. And then, we, we, there are no choice to, to, to Sudanese government to, to bombard an area when there are an unfly zone. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, as he said, we prefer to have an unfly zone because this one will uh, minimize conflict or uh, effective on citizens. If we, if we have uh, missiles, missiles to defend, it still will be casualty in the citizens. But, so we prefer uh, no-fly zone. But if there is no-fly zone, then we will have a second choice. We will need to have missiles so we can defend ourselves. Uh, I, maybe we have different opinions, but uh, to impose a no-fly zone, we don't want to risk anybody's life. We are capable to impose that no-fly zone, but we need the tools, the proper tools. We definitely will be able to do that job. And I will stay short. And if you have a way of giving us the tools, we'll do it. Thank you. Yes, um, I appreciate your question. Uh, it's a good question. Both, I think, um, whatever can, you know, help us protect our people on the ground, that I think is, uh, is very important. And, uh, and this is not a unique kind of, um, of uh, you know, demand or something. I think in Syria, they gave, in um, Libya, they gave, they imposed no fly zone as well as technical support like single, I'm not familiar actually with the arm thing, you know, but no, I guess I'm trying to give you know, the overall kind of thing or something. But yes, whatever can support us, defend our people, because this is not an um, attack on other people or something. This is about defense. And I think defense is a legitimate thing even under the United Nations Charter. And what we are doing right now and we have been doing for a long time is to defend our people and have the right to defend our people. So if you, our friends, they want to help us, to, for imposing no fly zone or bringing other technical support, we would, whatever you want to call it, I don't know the name of that kind of thing or something, we are welcoming it and we are ready actually to accept that because that will help us defend our people and that's the most important thing. Thank you. My name is Abdul Jabbar Adam. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my question is. 
the future of the war in Sudan is coming. It's not about just, uh, I mean, the peaceful resolution, stuff like this. The government of Sudan had the same ideology like the uh, Islamic movement in Tunisia, in Libya, in, in Egypt, and in Syria. Sudan helped the Islamists to occupy Tripoli during the Libyan war. Sudan helped the war in Mali. Sudan is helping what is happening in Egypt and in Syria. When the, when the problem in, Su in Syria is resolved, all these factions, would be coming to Sudan for the real war of Arab racism against Africans in Sudan. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Yes, that's why I mentioned the Sudan, and I sent message to Obama why Al Gaddafi and and why Mubarak and not Al Bashir. Al Bashir now he is supporting uh, Mali groups, Mali Islamic groups, the whom they are coming there for, and this is a true. Why not? We are French. This is the truth. That, that's, that's why we're sending this message. We have to be clear. We have to be clear. Thank you. Would anyone else like to respond to that? I just want to add, this question should be to the other, that they call them uh, community, international community leaders, especially uh, us here in the U.S., because this one will not be only Sudan. We are Sudanese now, we are, we are ready for it, we're fighting it every day. But this one, if they let it go so far, it will affect not only Sudan, but it will affect the region, either, even the world. Thank you. This gentleman back, way back there, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Amir Levis. Uh, it seems that you know the panelists agree on um, the New Dawn Charter as um, uh, as a new solution for the problems of Sudan. So my question to the four of you is whether you have a media strategy to market the ideas of the New Dawn. Charter, because it's known that you know media plays a very important role, not less than the role the arm can play. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a very relevant question, the role of the media, because the regime has been um, distorting a lot of things which is going on right now in Sudan about many conflict and all this kind of thing. And one of the things actually is um, frightening the people is using the tool of media. So we need actually to have our uh, media institution. And this is actually one of the failures, to be honest with you. I'm very frank with you, because now after 10 years, it's time for reflection. One of our reflection and our lesson learned is the missing of the media tools. And we hope that our American friends actually to help us with, the, uh, with this media. Because if we have media tools and we have our broadcast and our you know, TV channel or something, I think, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to, to set any kind of deadline, but she will never stay for long actually in power, that, that, the, that for sure. But another thing, just a small thing, is about this thing, um, uh, terrorism. Uh, you know, I believe that now the Iranian, also they are working very close with the, with the Khartoum regime. Just your surprise, you see that Ahmadina got last meeting in, in, trip in, uh, in Cairo, that actually was brokered by, by Bashir. So all these people right now, they are working together. That's why I'm calling for you know, long-term kind of strategic, uh, strategic partnership, because this is not only about Sudan. We'll do our bit, we'll do our homework, but actually this is not about us, because that could undermine you know, the international, regional and international peace and security, and we need to work together. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for the media strategy, I, I, I believe it is uh, very important that we do have a voice out there. Uh, but yet again, we're facing uh, a government that have uh, resources, not only the resources of the Republic of Sudan, but also resources of these Arab 
uh, countries that rich of oil, they got money, and they don't know where to put their money, I believe. Um, even the, the, the channels that has been founded by U.S. government here in very Washington, D.C., and we do have a few Darfuris, they have been working on it, but it also has been dominated by pro-Sudan government uh, individuals who have worked in that. And we do have a living example, at least two individuals here. We do have uh, Mohammed Suleiman, we do have Bahar Arabi. They have been expelled from the very same institution with no explanation. So we have been surrounded from all, all sides. We need everybody's help in order to get through of this. And yes, media is important. Thank you. Uh, my name is Hamza Ibrahim. Um, just this question for Mr. Phillips. And how much insurance are you going to give us uh, as uh, SPLM right now in, in Addis uh, to negotiate over there? We know that the SPLM, from a statement, they went over there for humanitarian aid. So how much insurance you want to give us to SRF so as SPLM is not going to have a political negotiation in future? Because a lot of people, they think that SPLM may be is half going to have a political approach. And another question for all of Darfurians. As U.S. government always try to separate the issue of Darfur, issue of Blue Nile. And right now, the Doha agreement, they try to facilitate it half next month for the financial contribution from all around the world. So how much is that when it's going to affect us as a Darfurian, as a Sarah? So it does going to have a big issue supported by U.S. or it's going to be, it's not. Thank you. Okay, yeah. As uh, SPLM North, we are clear on this one since we, this since the war started, we want this to be resolved correctly and once for all Sudanese. But we have uh, priority. Our priority is uh, humanitarian, as I said earlier. And when you see uh, SPLM North going to uh, negotiation place, whether it's in Ethiopia or anywhere else, they go to save the lives that they in Nuba Mountains and Blue Nile without food for almost two years. This is why they go. The uh, second reason is. There is a demand by AU, uh, United uh, African Union, and also based on uh, U.S. Security Council uh, Resolution 2046, we go there for this humanitarian reason. But if there is any uh, negotiation, political, uh, our uh, Demand is clear. We want everybody to get involved, and we want to be, this one to be resolved for all of us as Sudanese, based on uh, 28, uh, June 28, 2011. That's what was signed. We are going to negotiate, sit down, based on that. Rather than that, we are not going to sign any agreement with the uh, NCP. Okay. Um, Yes, there are questions for um, separate of issues. We as the Sudan Liberation Movement Army, we believe in the comprehensive solve a problem. That's what, that's our vision. We, we, we don't care if there are anything else going to negotiate Al-Bashir, we are still fighting Al-Bashir, we are still fighting a regime, we are still fighting, fighting these uh, fundamentals until we win, until we create a secular democracy state which is for all the Sudanese. That's our vision. We are not give up, and we are the yours. We are going to create this vision. And we are seriously, we are ready. This is our vision. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this uh, opportunity. I think since yesterday, we acknowledge that the uh, government of Sudan is using uh, division 
for the black Africans in Sudan to rule them. And uh, I just want to thank Act for Sudan for calling us together, all different parties, uh, opposition parties. And uh, I want to ask all of you, what's the plans for, for the future? What actions are you going to say? And are you ready for the unity? Uh, okay. uh, I think if we come on what action in the future, it might be uh, me personally from my own perspective, I cannot say what action we have tomorrow or day after, but uh, in a point of unity, we all united as SRF, all of us we talking in behalf of SRF, yes, we do have our own entities, but we talk in, in whole SRF issue. Uh, we will conduct whatever business is necessary for SRF together. Uh, many voices think maybe we do have a separate agenda, but our goal is the same. We work in the course of this bigger Sudan, which is you, me, and the others, we all are equal citizens in this Sudan. Even the Northern Sudanese, Western Sudanese, those who come from Middle Sudan. Chairman Minawi's uh, statement was very clear last time he was here. Uh, he pointed that we will talk to all the Sudanese who do have a concern of issue of the Middle Sudanese, Sudan, because we do have a, a moral obligation toward our country. Many may end up talking in separation one of these days, but in SLM perspective, we don't have that vision. We're working in, towards a one Sudan, which will fit us all, and I believe it fit us all. Thank you. And, uh, I think, Bishop, uh, your question is very important and strategic, and we believe that um, if we get united and achieve the complete unity, the game is over. So she's not going to stay for long at all. And that's why, and that's why this issue of unity is, 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 um, is, is, our plan is, you know, now we achieve some sort of unity. This good stage, you know, the SRF itself, I think, is, is one of the phases of unity. But this is not the comprehensive thing. We have to work very hard on it. And we need also your help. Because this is not just can be done by the politicians, by, by the whole the movement or something, but this has to be with all sections of our community in different places. People like you, I think, can play a very central role, and we are looking forward, actually, for your, your role on this one, because we can listen to you. You are a unifying figure. Others also, as well. You can also, you know, create some sort of initiative, you know, you know, for, you know, for people like you and the others. We can go together and influence us, put pressure on these leaders, because, you know, the SRF also, it wasn't just came out of the blue. That also was uh, an effort and, and actually work of a lot of people who are outside the movement themselves. They put pressure on the leaders. Get united, get united. And then the SRF actually, you know, being like um, now one of the stages of, uh, of this unity. But uh, if we unite ourselves, I think um, that will uh, take us um, to a very good um, achievement. And, um, and the other thing also I want to do it is here in the United States, you know, you know, everywhere. And I think I want this summit to be the uh, milestone for our own diaspora unity. It's very important. Because what I, can, what I see, I came just last September, what I see is a lot of disunity actually among our diasporas. So we need also, yes, you need the movement to be united. It is very important. But also we want our community back home to be united. And we want our diaspora also to be united. And you have the willingness and determination to do that. We hope that, you know, after this uh, summit, you know, we have a lot of initiative and a lot of effort for this unification within our diaspora itself. Because that can set a very good model and very good message for even the political leaders. Thank you. Yes. Um, the action, it is... That's what we are doing now, protecting ourselves, protecting our people as far. And the unity, yes, now we are in a pre unity. We created a new, new, new down. Before new down, there are the Cowd Alliance, SRF. SRF is a long term, and the new down is a short term to down Al Bashir. And then we have 
a new vision for Sudan. That is what I repeated in the secular democracy, peace in Sudan, and reunity all the Sudan. Thank you. And also, not government dividing us as uh, Africans only, but he used other ethnic, like Arab backgrounds too. So we went further, not only united as uh, African uh, background, but also we went further and approached the other, uh, other uh, political parties. So we all can come together for one Sudan to avoid a division in Sudan. Uh, my name is Ibrahim from the Bija Eastern Sudan. Uh, actually, my question to Ahmed Hussein uh, because he mentioned that Bashir regime, just the old regime who committed a crime. That's wrong because the genocide, as Philip mentioned, it takes place a long time in Sudan since 1954 in Torit and at the end and Jabal Marra and the Masalit massacres. And it's well known all those Northern Party before Bashir, they committed crimes and genocides. So my question is why we allow all those criminals to come back and take the power and kill us again. Right? The next question is it is well known that Umma Party, DUB, and uh, the Salafists, those are religious uh, parties, and they have religious wings. So what's the importance of the, uh, the, of the concept of separation of religious uh, from state, if we have those religious parties in the power? My third question is, what is the position of the New Dan about the bigger land occupied by the Egypt, Halai Triangle, occupied by Egypt in 1994. We need a clear uh, uh, what, why, what is the position of the, SR, the New Dan about. The third one is the right of self-determination. It is part of the human right. Why the, why the New Dan, they don't acknowledge the right of self-determination of Sudan marginalized people. Okay, I mean, that's it, that's all. Okay, that's you. four questions. So we'll, one answer to each question, please, let, for starting. And next conference, you've had your supply of questions. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Um, yes, the crimes actually hasn't, um, uh, have been started in, uh, 2003 is for sure. These uh, guys have been committing these crimes all the way and you know, they have to be held accountable for it, there is no question. But the problem is the ICC started, or started or from cannot go back, you know, uh, before actually 2002 or something like that. But this is not necessarily that the crimes actually they committed, they committed genocide all the way, as you said, even before the independence of Sudan. I can go back with you, you know, even before the independence of Sudan. They have to be held accountable. Do we have determination to do? And even the massacre of Port Sudan, you know, which happened against our own people, bigger people in, in Port Sudan. Also, that has to be when we are calling right now, actually, for international commission to investigate that massacre and to investigate other massacres. Because also, right now, as you see, the prosecutor said that the, everything outside that port is outside the jurisdiction of the ICC. We need to work very hard as a community. We need to work very hard, actually, to. Um, to, uh, to bring that, those issues and those violations which are committed on all these places to the, to the attention of the Security Council, and after that to be referred to the ICC. Uh, you talk about these uh, political leaders like Uma Party and others or something, I'm just trying, trying just to assure you we are reaching out to everybody. Because our aim is to create alternative for Bashir that that, that that the aim actually will be. But whoever actually come to our alliance, and whoever actually want to unify with us, I think our position is very clear. One, two, three, in everything. On the outstanding issues, we told them very clear. And they signed that, either to be committed to what they signed for, 
or the caliphs. But this uh, SRF and the others, they represent the core of the coalition which is going to lead the change in our country. But actually, we don't want to leave them, as just my colleague um, do to say, you know, Al-Bashir is playing the racial card right now. He's frightening these people. SRF is going to come and kill you and kill everybody actually in Khartoum. That is playing this racial card because he's bankrupt, because he doesn't have any political answers. He doesn't have any kind of project or something like that. Do we leave, the, leave Al-Bashir to, to use these people? Should we please these people actually to side with Al-Bashir? Or we can bring them in, and after that we can make them commit to, 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 to real transformation and restructure of the country. That we have to be creative about it. We have to be very smart. It can, it can be very easy for us just to say that, no, you are not, you don't belong to us, you are not from us or something, go and do your own thing. I think this is not creative. I think we are looking for something to be inclusive because the aim is to create alternative and that alternative is coming right now because we don't want our country actually to be in a very chaos, chaotic situation or something like that. But we are about Halai, I'm committed. I believe in the sovereignty of Sudan and territorial sovereignty of Sudan and territorial integrity of Sudan. Halai is a part of Sudan. We are committed that Halai to be part and parcel of our country. Thank you. I have a question about Fiji. Does somebody want to answer? The Yes, um, first of all, it is normally there uh, to be, uh, they are uh, a party, they are retreat the new down. It is a normal. We have Al Bashir and we have party close to Al Bashir and they are part of Sudan. But they are agree with us to, 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 to down Al Bashir. It is a short term, that's why I call. They are a long term. A long term, it is, it, that's why we are fighting. There are people, they say, we don't, their party said, we don't want a secular state. They said, we don't want a, a Sudanese identity. They, they, they create an um, Islamic state, a religion state. They creating in their vision an uh, 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 Arab state. That's a real, that's why the Bashir mentioned, and other party they mentioned. It. They need the Arab state. They don't want the Sudanese, uh, all the Sudanese multicultural. They don't want the secular state, which is the separate between a religion and a state. That's why we are fighting, deeply fighting in Sudan. And this is our vision. That's why we are going to create this. And second, um, uh, Bija, yes, that's why I'm concerned. The Bija and Nubia and every part, they're supposed to be one of our parties. No, one of our, our groups in SRF, in New Down, to, 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 to change Al Bashir. And they help, they will help us to create a new Sudan because they are important parts in the Sudan, Bija and Nubia. And we can't go far. And we can't go forward without the Bija, without Nubian, without Darfurian, without South Kurdufan. And this is our region, that's why we are believed, that's why we are create an identity of Sudan. This is the identity of Sudan. Bija, Nubian, Darfurian, that's the identity and that's why we are fighting for, that's why we are going forward. Thank you. Ah. My name is Abdullah Bakhi. I represent the Darfurian Congress Council of Canada that is located in Calgary, Alberta. Also, I represent the SLM office in Canada with under leadership Mr. Abdul Wahid Mohammed Ahmed Noor, which is the founder of this SLM since 2003 to present. Okay. Do you have a question? Yes, one second. Give me please a second. Also, we are the member of SRF in Canada, all four movement revolutions, including Sudan Revolution Front. Thank you for organizing for this conference. I am happy to be here. This is an important event for us. The work we have been in Canada has a Darfurian Congress Council of Canada is, this the question? is related is the comment please uh, I'm is sorry, the we really we really need a question yes I, I will be one. I will be in question please. the question now okay ask the question one second please <laughs> it's related it's related to try to different level of the government of Canada to US government to resolve this problem we know what's the problem the problem in the actions US Department it should not, including CI, uh, CCIS, International Criminal Court, the Sudan, 
is, is a very fundamentalist government, Omar Bashir, yes. is divided for two countries, which is... We have another question. One second, please. Do we which have is, another question? We're going to go on to a question when he finishes. Yes, the, the question. Who is the divided country? It's two countries. The divided is two countries. The continuous to regime, the killing our people by poison. The Iran is still attacking the Sudan. What's the question the international and all organization to take action to ask to, to ask by the US Department to take action for this regime. Okay. We are SLM. Yeah. We are continuous okay. to remove Thank you forward. very much. So Thank that was the much. question. Okay. Did Okay, um, there was a lady there, yes, up there. Okay, yes, ma'am. No, she's right there. She has the mic. This is Maya Sef, and I'm a um, Sudanese citizen, concerned citizen. Um, I have a question for the panelists. Um, earlier, um, um, someone had mentioned that the, um, the new strategic and um, instructional plan for the new Sudan, um, Sudan that will be inclusive to everybody, um, will be the, 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 the new Dawn Charter. Um, you also mentioned that not all groups are represented um, under that charter. So what are you doing specifically to include women groups, civil society organizations, youth, and student um, um, civil, I mean, people in Sudan? Um, how are you going to make it attractive and inclusive to them? Um, the NCP has used the opposite, the exact opposite of that, and that is to separate people, and that's how they've been in power for the past 23 years. So what are you doing to make us all feel um, included and, um, and, and to welcome this charter as well? Thank you very much. Let's have one person give an answer to that. And then I didn't realize everybody lining up here was for asking a question. I thought you were just standing there. But we'll, we will only have time for one more question after this. I'm sorry. So um, yeah. let's have an answer about the inclusivity. Inclusivity is there, and uh, women already included. There was a representative woman in uh, Kampala when this one was signed, and we, but they still, we are now talking to all the groups, civilian, as we said earlier, civilization groups, any groups. Uh, we, we are open, they are open to that, and women and youth, they included in that one. Hello? Okay. Thank you so much. My name is William Deng. I just want to ask a question to you, our fans, that what is going on in Sudan I seen to be out of racism against the African black. Uh, it's going on in Sudan, and that is not Bashir only. It's been going on beyond. And I think of Sadiq Al Mahdi, also Trabi, also Mohammed Al Margani, and many others in Tel Aboot. They actually very much. Uh, Form Sudan as Arab and Islamic State, and very much that means that the Arab world, the five percent Arab tribes, they declare the war against the African majority, and ninety-five percent, and that is the deal. So my question is, the uh, new Don Charter that involves Sadiq Al Mahdi and many others, what that makes you that you're going to accomplish this to, to bring Sudanese together? I saw Sudanese as well. I was a slave by the Sadiq Al Mahdi time. Slavery still exists in Sudan. And I was a former slave. And I have very much lost my family members during the Sadiq Al Mahdi time. Do you think I will be certified to support the cause of African in that border, Nuba Mountain, and that border, Blue Nile, when the Sadiq Al Mahdi didn't go your, your party? As a South Sudanese, try to support my brothers and sisters as an African identity? Thank okay, you. thank you very much. This, um, I really appreciate um, the agony and you know, the feeling of my brother William Dane, and I think you are right actually to, to mention this. And I know, I know this thing going beyond you know, this regime and even beyond the independence of Sudan, there is no question. And the names that you just mentioned is, is very true. And, and what we are talking right now, we are talking about 
this transitional cake and transitional period. After that transitional period, when we come, we didn't say that actually we are going to, um, to forget all the crimes that committed. We have, we have to find a way to deal with our past. The past violation of human rights have to be addressed. There's no question about that. The problem is when. Right now we have some priorities. We need to get rid of this guy who is committing active genocide everywhere. After that, we have to sit down because uh, the past violation of human rights are very, very important issue. We cannot go for any future without addressing the past violation of human rights. Are we ready to do that through, you know, transitional justice? Are we ready to do it, you know, a ministry? Are we ready to be like, a, you know, reconciliation or truth reconciliation or by court? That actually for the Sudanese to determine it. We are not going to, to, to say anything about it. We are not going to, uh, to, to decide about it. But you and the others and everybody have to come together and then to decide about how we are going to deal with the past violation of human rights. Okay, we have five minutes left. I will take a question from Traji, if it's a question. Only a question. Uh, thank you very much. And it's about women again. Even my sister, she asks there, but I'm not satisfied yet. So for us, really, it is a shame as a Sudanese marginalized women to find that the four representatives are all male. It is really sad. Women are qualified enough to lead. And I'm here having two questions. With the new dual charter, I'm not satisfied with the representative of women. I'm not satisfied. The other thing, when you say a women organization has signed and some youth organization has signed, they are not enough, they are not the genuine Sudanese women leaders and they are not the genuine Sudanese youth leaders. So, we can cheat the Americans, but we are not gonna cheat ourselves. As a Sudanese, we know from inside out, we tell you that is not the change we need. And we are here just to warn our leaders, and we are working from inside out. We will never give up, and Sudanese women, we are not going back. And the 30% you gave us is not enough. We're oh, going to be 50%. Thank, thank you. you. And the question, I guess, is how are you all going to include women more efficiently in the future of Sudan? Sudanese women, yay! The short, the short answer to that it is in the, in the Sudan Liberation Movement, we have a 54% of women. 50, 50, we are a Sudan liberation in our constitution. And everybody, and even Traji, she knows that. In Sudan liberation movement by Abdul Wahid, 50, 50, we have leaders, they are fighting beside our rebels there, and they are political uh, uh, leaders, and they are Sudanese activism in Sudanese uh, uh, university as UPF leaders in Sudan, and they are arrested more than three and seven and, you know, times. And I'm very concerned about that. And also, in, uh, in the racism uh, about the Sudanese, we say uh, Sudan Liberation Movement was established to liberate Sudanese people from Islamic fundamentals and Arab racism, also to, to, to stop killing people and to stop systematically Arabization country, which is belong to all of us as Sudanese, as different religions, as different cultures. That's what we said. Thank you. Or the answer is that it's open. This charter is open to everyone and every organization. If we say no women or no youth, then we will block. But we say it is open. Come on, if you agree on it, sign on it. If we want to make a modification, we, we will do it. Let's sit down and find which best way for us to do with it as Sudanese. It's open. Nobody is uh, blocked. Um, for the institution of uh, uh, SRF, I, be, I, I believe it has been written, and it, uh, presentation of women, uh, it is 30 percent. But I believe we are not the one who is supposed to make the call. Let's be real, and we let all together work in order to make the percentage higher. But we cannot make any promises to make the percentage higher or lower. Uh, however. From my standing point, I believe women should be presented even more 
uh, but that's not the case right now. Uh, if we come into the uh, uh, issue of uh, who is legit on and who is not, I believe we can disagree in order to agree in any issue. This is the democracy that we're looking for. So what you see is wrong, not necessarily I have to see the same way. So therefore, we have to disagree in order to come in an agreement. Thank you. I apologize for um, Sister Taragi for um, all us being males here actually in this panel. Maybe next time we'll, you know, we'll include um, you know, women to be here. You are qualified, uh, yes, more, even more than us actually to be in this panel and address all these issues which we said right now. I, I just want to say, yes, it's not enough. The, those who signed the new, the new chart actually in Kampala, that they are not actually presenting all the women in Sudan. But it's still, this is unfolding actually issue, and it's our stand issue, we have to address it. For very simple reason, you know, we came to understand that, and everybody actually learned the lesson, that there will be no progress and prosperity in our society without more involvement of women. No way. Because the statistics, we have figures and numbers. The most prosper, prosperous actually societies and countries are those, are those societies and countries who are actually which are involving war women in decision process and you know economic institution, political institution or something. We have to do the same actually if we want to deal with the future of Sudan because this panel is about about the future of Sudan. We will continue working with you and working with others so that you know to have women not just to be included, to have real ownership in the process of the new dawn and process of the change in the country. Thank you. Well, we have all men on the panel, but the women had the last word, so I think that's pretty good. Let's thank our panelists. Uh, insufficient. <laughs>